Video library also at cspan.org. We're going to break away here. The U.S. House is coming in. Uh, general speeches up first, and then they will begin work on reauthorizing the 1994 Violence Against Women Act for five years until 2017. They'll also begin work this afternoon on the 2013 authorization bill, the Defense Programs Bill. Live house coverage here on C-SPAN. The House will be in order. The prayer will be offered by the guest chaplain, Reverend Tom Ellsworth, from Sherwood Oaks Christian Church, Bloomington, Indiana. Let us pray. Almighty God, mere words are inadequate to express our deep gratitude for the privilege of living in such a great land. You have graciously guided this nation in the past. I pray that you will continue to bless in the days ahead. For all who have served in the past and for all who currently serve within these hallowed walls, we give you our thanks. Bless them and their families. I pray, Lord, that you will encourage them on the days when they are criticized more than cheered. Give them strength under stress, peace under pressure, and wisdom under the weight of the burdens they carry. Fill them with your insight and divine perspective. Give them good judgment in the decisions they make. Guide their thoughts and intentions to reflect your timeless values. And in the nation's business of this day, grant them success. In Christ I pray. Amen. The chair has examined the journal of the last day's proceedings and announces to the House his, his approval thereof. Pursuant to Clause 1 of Rule 1, the journal stands approved. The Pledge of Allegiance will be led by the gentleman from North Carolina, Mr. McIntyre. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Without objection, the gentleman from Indiana, Mr. Young, is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, I ask for unanimous consent to address the House for one minute and revise and extend my remarks. Without objection. I want to thank my friend Tom Ellsworth and his wife Elsie from traveling all the way from Bloomington, Indiana to, to deliver this morning's opening prayer. Tom has devoted his life to ministry. He is senior minister to me, my wife Jenny, our four children, and so many other Hoosiers at Sherwood Oaks Christian Church in Bloomington. 2012 marks the 50th year since Sherwood Oaks was founded. To mark the celebration, Tom has thrown down the gauntlet. Our church will pray, give, and serve like never before. Tom is challenging more of us to become the hands and feet of God, serving our neighbors, our country, and beyond. Tom understands that our nation, in fact any nation worthy of the name, was built by selfless servants. People like the 55 members of our church who recently activated their faith to help out tornado victims in southern Indiana. America needs more such servants and more people like Tom to inspire us to service. Thank you for making a difference, Tom. I yield back. The chair will entertain up to 15 further requests for one-minute speeches on each side of the aisle. The gentleman from Texas is recognized. Speaker, I request unanimous consent to address the House for one minute. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, the military spends a lot of money studying, presumably, the effectiveness of military programs. In fact, there are numerous military studies of military programs. So many, the Department of Defense has commissioned a study of those numerous studies to see how much those studies cost. Stay with me, Mr. Speaker. Now, the General Accounting Office has done their own study of the military study that is studying the cost of numerous military studies that are studying the cost and effectiveness of military programs. The GAO has concluded its study 
that the military study of the studies is incomplete, inconclusive, and inconsistent. So we really don't know how effective or costly those military studies are. Meanwhile, the cost of the GAO study has not been studied yet. Mr. Speaker, I hope this short study of the government studies programs lets us all know how effective and, effic and efficient government bureaucracy actually operates. And that's just the way it is. The chair will receive a message. Mr. Speaker, a message from the President of the United States. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Secretary. I am directed by the President of the United States to deliver to the House of Representatives a message in writing. Thank you. For what purpose does the gentleman from North Carolina seek recognition? Address the House for one minute, permission to revise and extend my remarks. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to say happy birthday to the United States Department of Agriculture, which celebrated its 150th birthday on May 15th. In my home state of North Carolina, we have contributed to our nation's agricultural success, and the 7th Congressional District is the most productive agricultural district in the state, with over $2.5 billion worth of agricultural products sold each year. Because our farms and our farmers and our agribusinesses are so critical to our state's economy, it is vital that the USDA partner with us, as it does with states throughout our country. Helping farmers manage risk, providing a safety net for producers who experience disasters from weather, pest, or price collapse, giving rural communities the tools they need to be able to make infrastructure improvements, investing in cutting-edge agricultural research at our country's premier research institutions and land-grant universities. These all allow for breakthroughs in crop science and animal agriculture. Indeed, we say happy birthday to our USDA. We know that the state of North Carolina and all of our states that benefit from its services allow our farmers and our rural communities in rural America to enjoy the strong, positive relationship to share our future together. Let's keep our farmers and our rural communities strong. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. For what purpose does the gentleman from South Carolina seek recognition? Without objection. Mr. Speaker, today the House will debate the National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2013. The House Armed Services Committee approved this bipartisan bill last week by a vote of 56 to 5. Earlier this year, the administration announced an increase in the TRICARE enrollment fees by up to 345 percent. As chairman of the Subcommittee on Military Personnel, I am pleased the committee refused to authorize a provision to forward the administration's unfair proposal which would destroy jobs. Our brave men and women in uniform and their families have devoted their lives to defend our country. Their service to our nation should be considered a prepayment of health care benefits in retirement. I urge my colleagues to support this bill and give our military families the fairness they deserve so they can work for peace through strength. In conclusion, God bless our troops, and we will never forget September 11th and the global war on terrorism. Welcome to Washington, realtors and CPAs. For what purpose does the gentleman from Rhode Island seek recognition? Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to honor and recognize Detective Walter C. May, Jr., who works for the Middletown Police Department in the 1st Congressional District of Rhode Island. Detective May recently received an honorable mention from the National Association of Police Organizations, which praised his work as part of their Top Cops Award of 2012. Detective May was recognized for his efforts in apprehending a murder suspect last year. The Top Cops Award recognizes law enforcement officers who have been nominated by their peers for going above and beyond the call of duty. An 18-year veteran of the Middletown Police Department, Detective May has been awarded a Meritorious Service Medal from the department. I congratulate Detective May today on his impressive achievements and thank him for his continuing service on behalf of our community. This week, as our nation observes National Police Week, we are mindful that Detective May and every retired and every active duty Rhode Island police officer deserves our tremendous gratitude for their commitment to ensuring our safety. I yield back the balance of my time. The Chair will remind all members of the gallery that they are guests of the House and that any manifestation of approval or disapproval of proceedings is in violation of House rules. For what uh, purpose does the gentleman from Arkansas seek recognition? Uh, the House for one Without objection. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to honor Mr. Ralph Cheshire, a veteran teacher in the Valley View School District of Jonesboro, Arkansas. For 37 years, Mr. Cheshire has taught his students the principles of agriculture. Mr. Cheshire is also a longtime member of the Partners in Active Learning Setting, or PALS, program. PALS is a mentoring program that matches high school students in the vocational agricultural leadership class with kindergarten students to develop personal skills and explore interests in plants and animals. The, value, the Valley View PALS chapter is one of only 10 in Arkansas. Mr. Cheshire has a unique style of teaching through storytelling. He loves spending time with his students in the school greenhouse and shop, teaching them valuable skills and making his students become self-sufficient members of society. Mr. Cheshire will be remembered for his contributions to the academic and life development of his students. Many of the lessons he taught will go well beyond the classroom and stick with those students forever. Mr. Speaker, I'm honored to represent people like Mr. Cheshire who make Arkansas a great place to live. Happy retirement. Yield back. Gentleman yields back. For what purpose does the gentleman from New York uh, seek recognition? Without objection. Mr. Speaker, last week we learned that the William Street mail processing facility in my Buffalo community will remain open despite proposals by the Postal Service to close it. While this is welcome news, I remain deeply disappointed by the decide first and justify later approach the Postal Service has used throughout this process. From failing to notify residents of proposed closures to poor record keeping at public meetings, the amount of community involvement in this process has been unacceptable. And now postal workers are faced with the uncertainty as the status of their place of employment remains unclear. Mr. Speaker, we must take advantage of this temporary moratorium on closures to take a serious look at the facility closure process and make much needed reforms. I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. For what purpose does the gentlelady from New York seek recognition? Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I had the privilege of receiving a letter from a constituent, a 14-year-old young man, a star Boy Scout seeking to become an Eagle Scout, and he is concerned about the federal debt and deficit. And Christopher Wallace wrote to me, I think that the federal deficit is too high and overwhelming for Americans and will affect people like me even more in the future. I believe our government must stop spending more money than it takes in. Can you please help our government reduce our national deficit so myself and fellow young Americans will not be burdened by our national debt? Well, Christopher, I could not agree more with you, and you have the wisdom of someone who can look at this issue with fresh eyes. We here in the House of Representatives, under the leadership of Speaker Boehner, are dedicated to making sure that we do not add to that debt. And that is what we're concentrating on this year, and that's why I am so proud to support the Speaker in the Boehner principle that we will not raise the debt ceiling without at least dollar-for-dollar dollar compensatory cuts. Christopher, you deserve a better future. We are determined to provide that to you, and I urge our fellow members of the House to follow expired. the same. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. For what purpose does the gentlelady from Illinois seek recognition? Permission to address the House for one minute. Without objection. Since 1994, the Violence Against Women Act has strengthened communities and provided critical, life-saving support to victims of violence. VAWA reauthorization must continue to fight to protect all victims and their families from the fear of violence, including immigrants, Native Americans, members of the GLBT community, and college students. Unfortunately, for the first time in VAWA's history, we will not have a bipartisan reauthorization bill. Even worse, H.R. 4970 is a step backward and is opposed by hundreds of anti-violence groups. While there are many problems with the bill, I'm most distressed by provisions regarding battered immigrant women. H.R. 4970 destroys years of work to protect Im immigrant women. It creates more obstacles for these victims to report crimes, and it limits U-Visa protections and adds restrictive certification requirements that only discourage cooperation with law enforcement agencies, which themselves oppose these provisions. Victim safety is a core principle of VAWA. We must remain firm in our commitment to ensure that all victims of sexual assault, domestic violence, and trafficking have meaningful access to protection under the law. I yield back. For what purpose does the gentlelady from North Carolina seek recognition? 
I ask permission, uh, ask unanimous consent to address the House for one minute, Mr. Speaker. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Fostering job growth for American people continues to be number one job for House Republicans. With unemployment above 8 percent for the past 39 months, the Obama economy continues to produce the nation's worst jobless record since the Great Depression. By following the House Republican plan for America's job creators, the House has passed more than 30 bipartisan bills on behalf of the American people. Each of these bills is aimed at unleashing the power of our private sector to freely and confidently build, invest, innovate, and expand again, and put millions of Americans back to work. Unfortunately, the vast majority of these bipartisan House-passed jobs bills are being blocked or ignored in the Democrat-controlled Senate. The American people are tired of waiting. It is time for Democrats in the Senate and White House to put politics aside and support the House Republican plan for America's job creators. With that, I yield back, Mr. Speaker. The gentlelady yields back. For what purpose, the gentleman from uh, California seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I request the House consent to address the House for one minute and to advise and extend my remarks. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I rise in opposition to H.R. 4970, the partisan reauthorization of the Violence Against Women's Act. Since 1994, the Violence Against Women's Act has been a critical tool for women and children, victims of domestic abuse, and Congress has twice made necessary bipartisan improvements in the law. As a co-chairman of the Congressional Victims' Rights Caucus, I know that we have learned a great deal from law enforcement and victim advocates groups since we last reauthorized the Violence Against Women's Act in 2005. Unfortunately, this bill rolls back comprehensive protections for all vulnerable populations rather than reflecting on the lessons we've learned. We should be listening to the victim rights advocates groups our local law enforcement agencies who know and deal daily with the impacts of people's lives who are the victims of crime. Therefore, we ought to pass the bipartisan Senate reauthorization of bill and end this partisan charade. Time, I yield back the balance of my time. For what purpose does the gentleman from uh, Texas seek recognition? I ask permission to address the House and revise and extend my remarks. Without objection. The gentleman is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to express my strong opposition to H.R. 4970, the Violence Against Women Act, which shifts the power into the hands of the abuser and moves away from long-standing bipartisanship on this issue. In my view, a vote for H.R. 4970 is clearly an attack on the Violence Against Women Act and I'm deeply concerned that the manager's amendment to H.R. 4970 bill weakens current law and rolls back protections in the VAWA self-petition process, empowering abusers and harming battered immigrant spouses. The manager's amendment rolls back U visa protections, denying protection to immigrant victims of serious crime and stripping police and prosecutors of a critical law enforcement tool. The manager's amendment fails to include provisions from the bipartisan Senate passed bill to protect Native American women and include language that may lead to further abuse. The manager's amendment fails again to include provisions the bipartisan self time's passed expired. to protect the victims. I yield back. For what purpose does the gentleman from uh, Vermont seek recognition? Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In 45 days, the interest rates on some Stafford student loans are going to double. Even though we have a consensus in Congress that low interest rates should be extended, we can't get the job done. Families can't wait. They're sitting around trying to figure out how they'll put their kids through college. Take Beth from Westfield, Vermont. She told her children when they were young that college was part of their future and important if they're going to make it into the middle class. Now she fears she may have steered them wrong. Her family currently holds $150,000 in debt. And in a tough job market, Beth's kids are struggling to get a foothold in life with loan repayment costs exceeding $500 a month. Beth would like to help, but she's not really in a strong position to do so. She went, to, went back to college later in life, hoping to advance her career. 
and now she's weighed down with this enormous burden as are her kids. Mr. Speaker, Congress has 45 days. Congress needs to act. We can't afford to price the middle class out of a college education. I yield back. Gentleman yields back. For what purpose does the gentlelady from California seek recognition? I ask permission to address the House for one minute. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Violence Against Women's Act has saved lives, reducing domestic violence by half. Our colleagues in the Senate have embraced this fact and passed a bipartisan reauthorization bill that makes sense. Fortunately, I can't say the same thing about H.R. 4970. My Republican friends have good intentions. I believe they want to protect victims of domestic violence just as much as I do. But to be effective, however, our legislation has to address the problems as they exist. H.R. 4970 does not. The bill makes reporting abuse more difficult, forces shelters and counselors to spend more of their precious resources on unnecessary paperwork, and fails to extend protections to the LGBT Americans. And one of the most striking deficiencies is its failure to protect immigrant victims of abuse. Because of their status, immigrants are often scared to report crimes of violence. This fear results in more damage to their communities as the violence escalates. But the law enforcement has a powerful tool to combat these crimes, the U visa program, which protects immigrants if they report abuse. Fired. Thank you. I yield no balance. For what purpose does the gentlelady from California seek recognition? I have unanimous consent to address the House for one minute and on revise and extend. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, during my first term in Congress, I proudly voted for the Violence Against Women Act. It saddens me that 20 years later, in my last term, my Republican colleagues are determined to water down and undermine this landmark legislation. Of all things that shouldn't be partisan, this is it. The need to help those who've suffered injuries at the hand of someone who supposedly loves them. But as we've seen many times, the majority likes, or seems to like, playing politics with women's health and safety, and because they rarely miss an opportunity to exclude LGBT Americans from important rights and benefits, they're saying that if you're a woman who's in a relationship with another woman, then you don't deserve the same protection against domestic abuse or sexual assault. We need to be doing more, not less, on this issue. I have a bill that would extend family leave benefits to victims of domestic violence. It's H.R. 3151. Why don't we take up that bill instead of this divisive measure that rolls back historic progress? Vote no on H.R. 4970. Gentlelady's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from California seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, Gentlemen's recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, I rise today in strong opposition to H.R. 4970, this misguided GOP reauthorization of Violence Against Women's Act. Unfortunately, this bill does not do enough to protect the well-being of all women. I say, does not do enough to protect the well-being of all women. This reauthorization jeopardizes the safety of our Native American women and also the safety of many undocumented women. Neither the management amendment nor the underlying bill addresses a problem that face Indian country. Instead of empowering tribal police and courts to stop domestic violence, this legislation unfairly places a burden on Native uh, victims. Many of the victims of domestic violence are living in reservations, are unable to hire legal counsel, and can't travel hundreds of miles to federal courts to petition for protection orders. We must protect sovereignty. We must respect sovereignty. Tribal courts are the best authorities to issue domestic violence orders of protection on reservation. Let's stop this partisan bill. Let's work together on a new approach that values the safety of Native Americans and undocumented individuals in a bipartisan fashion. I yield back the balance of my time. For what purpose does the gentlelady from Oregon seek recognition? Without objection, the gentlelady is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's truly unfortunate that we're here today talking about the possibility of voting against the Violence Against Women Act. This bill was originally passed and has been consistently reauthorized with strong bipartisan support, but it now faces unnecessary hurdles. There's been a drop in annual rates of domestic violence since the passage of the Violence Against Women Act, but we still have work to do. Alarmingly, one in four women and one in seven men have been victims of domestic violence in 
their lifetime. But the current bill is not the way to move forward. Unlike the companion bill that passed in the Senate with strong bipartisan support, this House bill will take us backwards. It eliminates protections for immigrants dependent on and exploited by their spouses, keeping them trapped in violent relationships. It could let perpetrators of sexual violence against Native American women off the hook. And it utterly fails to recognize that anyone can be a victim of domestic abuse, including those in same-sex relationships. Every time we reauthorize an act of Congress, we have an opportunity to improve. Improvement, not further harming victims, should be our focus with the reauthorization. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield back. For what purpose does the gentlelady from Guam seek recognition? Without objection, the gentlelady is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, I rise today in opposition to H.R. 4970, the so-called Violence Against Women Act Reauthorization Act. I believe that all Americans are entitled to feel safe and we must strengthen current laws to continue to protect women and children across our country. This bill, however, does not achieve that goal. Immigrants, native tribes, lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender groups are some of our most vulnerable communities, and the bill rolls back years of progress in proving federal efforts against domestic violence, sexual assault, and stalking. The bill eliminates important confidentiality protections for self-petitions and would put immigrant women at a greater risk for repeat repeat abuses by undermining the intent of U visas. This bill discourages crime victims from cooperating with law enforcement and eliminates any attempt at a stable life by terminating their eligibility for permanent residence. Women in this country, regardless of their background, should never have to feel trapped or helpless. And with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. For what purpose does the gentlelady from Florida seek recognition? to address the House for one minute and revise and extend my remarks. Without objection, the gentlelady is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I never could have anticipated speaking in opposition to the Violence Against Women Act, and it's unfortunate that we've come to this point. But here we are. This comes after more than a year of bipartisan efforts to put together a comprehensive, effective, and much-needed VAWA draft. But Republicans in the Senate and then in the House decided to ignore the recommendations of the FBI, the Department of Justice, and advocacy groups on the ground, and push a version of VAWA that endangers immigrant women and children, ignores the needs of our Native communities, and perpetuates discrimination against LGBT victims. That is why hundreds of victim services organizations oppose this bill, and I stand with them today. At the Women in Distress Shelter in my district, there has been a 39% increase in requests for services over the last year. Women need us now more than ever, and this is not the time to allow for discrimination or helping only some victims of domestic violence. This is the time to take a stand. As lawmakers, we speak for the voiceless, and today I speak united with my colleagues in opposition to this shameful bill. I yield back the balance of my time. Gentlelady, time has expired. For what purpose does the gentlelady from California seek recognition? Without objection, the gentlelady is recognized for one minute. Thank you very much. Today I stand with my Democratic colleagues and victims of domestic violence across our nation in strong opposition to H.R. 4970, the House Republican alternative to Violence Against Women Reauthorization Bill. This bill severely undermines vital protections available to victims of violence and places those victims in danger of continued abuse. Since its enactment in 1994, the Violence Against Women Act, known as VAWA, has a long history of uniting lawmakers with the common purpose of protecting survivors of domestic violence each year across the nation, thousands of women, children, and men who fall victim to domestic violence, human trafficking, sexual assault, dating violence, and stalking no longer have to live in fear because of important victim protections under this law. This Republican alternative bill threatens to dismantle this progress by deliberately placing domestic violence victims from LGBT, immigrant, tribal, and other marginalized communities in harm's way. Proposed changes, I yield back the balance of my time. Gentlelady's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentlelady from uh, California seek recognition? The gentlelady is recognized for one minute. Thank you. I rise today to oppose H.R. 4970. Under current law, 
a woman who is married to a U.S. citizen or a legal permanent resident and is a victim of spousal abuse can file a self-petition for legal permanent residency in order to leave that abusive relationship. This provision has helped women like Maria, whose husband physically abused her and threatened to kill her two children. Without his knowledge, she started a VAWA self-petition process, meeting with an attorney at the laundromat on her usual laundry day and hiding her paperwork. What this bill does is expose women like Maria. It strips confidentiality protections and allows government officials to contact the spouse. Why would we do that? For these women, tipping off abusive spouses is nothing short of putting them in harm's way. It's a shame. It's a shame that this so-called violence against women bill could actually cause violence to women. Mr. Speaker, this bill is outright dangerous, and I urge my colleagues to say no. For what purpose does the gentlelady from North Carolina seek recognition? The gentlelady from North Carolina, for what purpose do you seek recognition? Uh, Mr. Speaker, by direction of the Committee on Rules, I call up House Resolution 656 and ask for its immediate consideration. The clerk will report the resolution. House Calendar Number 131, House Resolution 656. Resolved that upon the adoption of this resolution, it shall be in order to consider in the House the bill, H.R. 4970, to reauthorize the Violence Against Women Act of 1994. All points of order against consideration of the bill are waived. The amendment in the nature of a substitute recommended by the Committee on the Judiciary now printed in the bill, modified by the amendment printed in the report of the Committee on Rules accompanying this resolution, shall be considered as adopted. The bill as amended shall be considered as read. All points of order against provisions in the bill as amended are waived. The previous question shall be considered as ordered on the bill as amended, and any amendment thereto to final passage without intervening motion, except one, one hour of debate equally divided and controlled by the chair and ranking minority member of the Committee on the Judiciary, and two, one motion to recommit with or without instructions. Section two. At any time after the adoption of this resolution, the Speaker may, pursuant to Clause 2B of Rule 18, declare the House resolved into the Committee of the Whole House on the State of the Union for consideration of the bill, H.R. 4310, to authorize appropriations for fiscal year 2013 for military activities of the Department of Defense, to prescribe military personnel strengths for fiscal year 2013, and for other purposes. The first reading of the bill shall be dispensed with. All points of order against consideration of the bill are waived. General debate shall be confined to the bill and shall not exceed one hour equally divided and controlled by the chair and ranking minority member of the Committee on Armed Services. After general debate, the Committee of the Whole shall rise without motion. No further consideration of the bill shall be in order except pursuant to a subsequent order of the House. For what purpose does the gentlelady from uh, Wisconsin seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I raise a point of order against HRES 5656 because the resolution violates Section 426, Parent A of the Congressional Budget Act. The resolution contains a waiver of all points of order against consideration of the bill, which includes a waiver of Section 425 of the Congressional Budget Act which causes a violation of Section 426, Paragraph A. The gentlelady from Wisconsin makes a point of order that the resolution violates Section 426A of the Congressional Budget Act of 1974. The gentlewoman has met the threshold burden under the rule, and the gentlewoman from Wisconsin and a member opposed each will control 10 minutes of debate on the question of the consideration. Following debate, the chair will put the question of consideration as the statutory means of disposing of the point of order. The chair recognizes the gentlewoman from Wisconsin. Mr. Speaker, I raise this point of order not necessarily out of concern for unfunded mandates, although there are some unfunded mandates in the underlying bill, H.R. 4970. 
Rather, I am here today because this is the only opportunity to voice opposition to this bill, given the strict, closed terms of our debate today. It is baffling to me, Mr. Speaker, that we should be shut out of today's debate and that House Republicans would so completely abandon any pretense of bipartisanship on a bill like the Violence Against Women Act. This bill has always been a bipartisan effort, and I would argue that on an issue like this, it is incredibly important to have a well-rounded discussion. We obviously disagree about the key elements that are critical to include in a Violence Against Women Act reauthorization. Well, why not allow us to have a healthy debate? More importantly, Mr. Speaker, why not allow us our chance to try to improve the legislation before us? Our allies in the domestic violence and sexual assault advocacy community have literally spent years compiling input and data from service providers, law enforcement, and victim, victims themselves about what we must do to update VAWA uh, in a reauthorization. And I am here to be a voice of protest because their input is invaluable. And yet, for the very first time, their input has been cast aside. Last night, I offered a substitute along with Representative Conyers and uh, Representative uh, Lofgren that would have allowed us to consider the Senate-passed version of the Violence Against Women Act, a version which I proudly introduced in March here in this House of Representatives. This legislation was passed over in the Senate with sound bipartisan support and includes the improvements that have been endorsed by a broad array of individuals and organizations, including law enforcement agencies. But unfortunately, today, we will not be allowed to vote on the Senate bill. We will have to vote on the Adams bill, which is now officially opposed by over 325 organizations. Yes, Mr. Speaker, you heard it right. 325 organizations, and I ask unanimous consent to be able to insert the list of those organizations in the record. Without objection. I would like to share my time with my colleagues who are here with me today uh, and would like for their voices uh, to be heard. So, Mr. Speaker, with your permission at this time, I'm going to yield to a number of members for unanimous consent, um, the first of whom is Ms. Yvette uh, Clark from Brooklyn, New York. I thank the gentlelady. Mr. Gentle Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to submit my remarks in opposition to a Republican bill that weakens protections for violence against women and in support of the bipartisan Senate bill. The chair will advise members to confine their unanimous consent request to a simple declarative statement of the members' attitude toward the measure. Further embellishments will result in the deduction of time from the yielding member. Parliamentary inquiry, Mr. Speaker. The gentlelady will, will uh, state her inquiry. A declarative statement uh, that you refer to, uh, am I not correct, Mr. Speaker? That could also include a sentence, a complete sentence. The chair will only be deducting time for embellishments. It, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to submit my remarks in opposition to a Republican bill that weakens protections for violence against women and in support of the bipartisan Senate bill that actually protects victims. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to submit my remarks in opposition to a Republican bill that weakens protections for violence against women and in support of the bipartisan Senate bill. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to submit my remarks in opposition to the Republican bill that weakens protections against the violence for women in support of the bipartisan Senate bill. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to submit my remarks in opposition to a bill that weakens protections for violence against women in support of the bipartisan Senate bill. Without objection. 
Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to submit my remarks in opposition to the Republican bill that weakens protections against violence for women and in support of the bipartisan Senate bill. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I join the United States Conference of Mayors and the Coalition Against Religious Discrimination in opposition to the bill, and I ask unanimous consent to submit their letters for the record. Without objection. The thank gentlewoman you, from Wisconsin is recognized. Thank you so very much, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank the ladies who are submitting their statements uh, for the record. The members who join me today are just a few of the many people who would like to be here to offer their suggestions for improving the bill and to highlight the stories of women, men, and children in their districts and communities who have experienced atrocious violence. There are lessons to be learned from their stories, and it is unwise and unkind of us to turn a blind eye. I'm thinking of, um, of Rosalind in Milwaukee, who was killed by her girlfriend, uh, Malika, uh, and her family had concern about her over-possessiveness. Uh, but of course, this is an LGBT relationship, and an order for pr of protection may have been ignored without these provisions. I think uh, of another person in my district, uh, Diane Story, 26 years old, married to a non-Indian, beaten, uh, over a hundred incidences of her, slapped, kicked, punched, living in terror, called for help several times, but no one ever came to her rescue, living on um, a tribal land. The Violence Against Women Act has been a lifeline for victims of domestic violence and sexual assault. It has allowed us to hold perpetrators accountable and to pave pathways out of violence for victims, all women. And since VAWA has passed in 1994, domestic violence has dropped by more than half. We must not turn back, Mr. Speaker. We must not weaken or repeal some of VAWA's life-saving protections. I request a roll call vote and ask that members not... Oh, uh, Mr. Speaker, reclaiming my time, I have one more member, if I have time, who has a unanimous consent request. Ms. Christensen. Thank you. I ask unanimous Ladies consent... Recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker. I ask unanimous consent to submit my remarks in opposition to a Republican bill that weakens protections against violence for women and in support of the bipartisan Senate bill. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Do I have more time? The gentlelady has five minutes remaining. All right. I will reserve. The gentlelady reserves. The gentle, gentlelady from North Carolina is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to claim time in opposition to the point of order and in favor of consideration of the resolution. The gentleman is recognized for 10 minutes. The question before the House is, should the House now consider HRES 656? Section 4 of the Unfunded Mandates Reform Act, UMRA, excludes from the application of that act any legislative provision that establishes or enforces statutory rights prohibiting discrimination. The Congressional Budget Office has stated that while they have not while they have not reviewed a provision in Section 3 of H.R. 4970 for intergovernmental or private sector mandates, since that provision prohibits discrimination on the basis of race, color, religion, national origin, sex, or disability, other provisions of H.R. 4970 would impose no intergovernmental mandates as defined in UMRA. CBO goes on to say the bill would impose private sector mandates as defined in UMRA on brokers of international marriage and certain supervisors over persons under official control of the United States. However, CBO estimates that the cost of those mandates would fall well below the annual threshold established in UMRA, $146 million in 2012 adjusted annually for inflation. Mr. Speaker, the motion of the gentlewoman is dilatory. In order to allow the House to continue its scheduled business for the day, I urge members to vote yes on the question of consideration of the resolution, and I reserve the balance of my time. Gentlelady reserves. Gentlelady from Wisconsin is recognized. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Speaker. And I do appreciate the woman uh, walking us through the protocols for the unfunded mandates. And I would submit to her that um, 
the national network to end domestic violence that who does a appointed time counting of domestic violence services um, uh, nationwide would indicate that it costs not only personal anguish but it, there are costs in society um, uh, actual fiscal costs to not protecting women um, who are suffering um, in violent situations. Uh, right in my own state of Wisconsin, 714,000 women have been assaulted, raped, or stalked by an intimate partner. I mean, this number actually exceeds the population of an entire city of Milwaukee. Imagine the cost to employers when people don't show up at work. Imagine the cost in emergency rooms when people show up battered and bruised and broken and have no health insurance. And approximately half a million of these women were fearful or concerned for their safety. 280,000 Wisconsin women 12.7% of our population have been stalked in their lifetimes. Imagine the cost of additional police work, uh, that this costs when nothing has been done, when these women call police and nothing has been done in terms of making arrests and, and asking for accountability. A study of childhood exposure to violence in Milwaukee has found that 16% of Wisconsin adults report having experienced occurring violence between adults in their childhood. Imagine the loss of productivity at schools. There, there's often a lot of talk about kids being inattentive in school and not being able to pass uh, and succeed in school. Next to hunger, imagine the cost of witnessing and experiencing violence in the home as a cost to society. I was wondering if the lady would yield to a question. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I will yield for a question. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Representative Fox. Um, I wanted to know, there were several amendments that were introduced um, in the Rules Committee last evening, and I was wondering if you were aware of any of the any amendments that were uh, adopted after we left the Rules Committee last evening. I know there had been a hearing, uh, and I was wondering if any of the amendments that Democrats had introduced were adopted. None of the amendments were made in order except the manager's amendment, which brings the bill closer to the Senate version of the bill. Thank you so much for that response. Well, the manager's amendment uh, thankfully was adopted because uh, the manager's amendment did have one little piece in there that to help out immigrant women. But there are 325 groups and organizations, everything from the National Women of Organization to evangelical women and the bishops that oppose even the manager's amendment because they say that not only are there just simply rollbacks to the Violence Against Women's Act, but it actually puts immigrant women in danger as the balance is tipped from current law in the favor of these batterers, sexual assaulters, abusers and killers. Um, again, the, 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 um, I, Mr. Mr. Um, Speaker, I would like now to yield to my good friend Laura Richardson uh, uh, from California for a unanimous consent request. Mr. No Speaker. Yes, I ask unanimous consent to submit my remarks in opposition to the Republican bill that weakens protections against violence for women. And I stand in strong support of the bipartisan Senate bill. Without objection. The gentlelady from Wisconsin is recognized. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. I was asking, uh, ask the gentlelady if she would just yield to one more question. Mr. Speaker, I'll yield. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I, will, I will answer the gentlewoman's question. Thank you for your courtesy, uh, Representative Fox. Will this body ever have an, uh, an opportunity to vote on the bipartisan bill from the Senate that passed 68 to 31? Will this body ever have the opportunity? Will that bill ever be before us? 
Mr. Speaker, I, I cannot assume what this body will do in the future. I am one member of the Rules Committee and the Education Committee. I do not have control over that, and I don't believe anybody can predict the future. Uh, uh, Representative, just a follow-up. You are a member, very senior member of the Rules Committee, and so I was wondering if the rule is structured in a way that will ever allow us to have it before us after we vote on, on this version, the Adams version Generally, of, the, um, of the VAWA bill, will there be a pathway toward voting on the Senate bill as you Generally, understand the rules? Generally, North, North Carolina is recognized. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I believe the gentlewoman's question is a question for the rule and is not uh, relevant to the point of order which she has raised. Gentleman's thank the speaker recognized. and thank the lady. I would. Uh, I, know, I, I, I would ask uh, the gentlewoman from gentlewoman from Wisconsin's time has expired. The gentlewoman from North Carolina is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it really pains me to see my colleagues across the aisle make the kind of accusations that they make about Republicans being unconcerned about the issue of violence against women. How could they possibly accuse us of not being concerned about that issue? All Republicans are concerned about violence against anyone. Violence we're very concerned about that. I personally won't even ever watch any kind of movie that has any violence in it because I can't stand to see violence perpetrated on another human being. So Republican men and women both abhor violence against women. But what we have done in the legislation that we're proposing is we're asking for increased accountability and to see that more services are directly offered to women who have violence perpetrated against them. In fact, I would say that we are more concerned again about violence for women because we want to see those women served better and we want to see the money spent better. Mr. Speaker, helping victims of abuse and domestic violence is not a Republican or Democrat issue. I have been pleased to work with Congresswoman Loretta Sanchez on H.R. 196, the simplifying the ambiguous law keeping everyone reliably safe or stalker act, which she has championed for the last two Congresses. The Democrats wouldn't bring this bill up when they were in control of the House. The Stalker Act updates the federal stalking statute to include electronic surveillance and other means of cyber stalking to ensure that potential stalking victims are protected as technology changes. In addition, the Stalker Act increases criminal penalties by five years for offenders who have violated a protective order or whose victims are under the age of 18 or elderly. Congresswoman Sanchez and I worked together regardless of which party was in charge of the House, and I'm pleased that legislation with the original co-sponsor uh, who is a Democrat has been included in the VAWA reauthorization bill that the House will vote on today. The VAWA reauthorization bill also adds stalking as an allowable grant purpose to continue the work of protecting these victims. As we all know, law enforcement and prosecutors must have the resources they need to pursue criminal vi cri violent criminals, and I hope my colleagues on both sides of the aisle will join me in voting for H.R. 4970 after voting for this rule providing for its consideration, or the rule we will uh, consider in just a few minutes. I'm not going to impugn the character of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle. We all want to stop violence against women. That's why Republicans have brought forth this bill. Again, the Stalker Act could have been brought forward under Democrat control of the House. It was not. And I'm very disappointed. But I'm proud of Republicans that we're doing it and we're strengthening the Violence Against Women Act, not weakening the act. And with that, Mr. Speaker, I yield back the balance of my time.
The gentlelady yields back. All time for debate has expired. The question is, will the House now consider the resolution? Those in favor say aye. Those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, the no's have it. The gentleman I request the yeas and the nays. The yeas and nays are requested. Those favoring a vote by the yeas and nays will rise. A sufficient number having risen, the yeas and nays are ordered. Members will record their votes by electronic device. This will be a 15-minute vote. On the House agenda this afternoon, consideration of the reauthorization of the 1994 Violence Against Women Act for five years until 2017. Ahead is debate on the rule, but Democrats have raised a point of order on the rule, uh, and this is a vote on a question of consideration of whether the House will take up the rule for the reauthorization of the Violence Against Women Act. The um, point of order raised by Democrats is because they are uh, bringing up the issue of uh, not having the not a, not the uh, having the Senate version considered by the House. The that the rule does not allow for the Senate version, which was passed in the Senate a couple of weeks ago, to be considered by the House. It did pass in the Senate uh, by a vote of 68 to 31, with 15 Republicans voting uh, yes in the Senate vote. So this is a 15-minute vote, a question of consideration, and the. Uh, Debate on the rule is still ahead. That rule also will be the rule for the later consideration of the defense programs bill, the defense authorization bill for 2017, just part of what's in store this week in the U.S. House. And we caught up with a Capitol Hill reporter for more details on the House agenda. The House Armed Services Committee spent nearly 16 hours this past week crafting its annual defense authorization bill. Rick Mays is a congressional reporter, congressional editor with Military Times, joining us from Capitol Hill. What are some of the key issues that lawmakers will be debating when the uh, bill comes to the House floor this week? Well, the, the, some of the key issues are issues we've seen before. They'll be talking about Afghanistan, although at the end of the day, there's not very much that they'll do about Afghanistan. They'll probably have some sense of Congress resolution on things that we ought to look at. They'll be fighting once again about detainees at Guantanamo Bay in Cuba. But part of the fight in that case is still the same thing. Will we ever have trials for them in the United States? Should we close the prison down in Cuba altogether? And, and one new wrinkle about a possibility by the Obama administration of trading some detainees who are being held and won't be tried to third-party countries in return for some peace agreement in the Middle East. So th those are the things we face. The, there's, there's a larger fight that we've already had on the House floor this week over how much money to spend on defense. The bill approved by the committee has $5 billion, excuse me, $4 billion more than the um, president asked for, $8 billion more than the budget um, agreement of last fall has. And Democrats aren't happy with the money being spent there, mostly because of where it comes from. Yeah, again, by amendment, there's not much that they can do about it because of where the money's being spent. They're, they're popular programs that most Democrats in the end would not want to vote to do. They spent money, for example, preventing TRICARE fees from increasing on military retirees. You're not going to find very many lawmakers who are going to vote for those increases on health care fees for people in an election year. Well, in the uh, committee debate this week, Democrats said that the bill has billions of dollars for weapon systems the country doesn't need. How do Republicans respond to that? Well, the Republicans respond that we need them. It's like a very simple disagreement between the two of them. What about the overall bill itself in terms of what, uh, the, what an authorization bill does versus a Pentagon budget bill? Well, this has specific authorization to do things. So you need it to start new programs or to continue programs that were going to expire. For example, there's like more than 30 bonuses included in the bill that would expire on December 31st if they didn't do it. But it's mostly for new starts, policy changes, pay raises, new weapons programs, construction projects, and things like that. It's mostly a bipartisan bill. It was a 56-5 uh, to 5 vote in the end. And this is one of the few committees that still, even though there's a lot of partisan bickering on Capitol Hill these days, one of the few committees that actually can get a bill done and pass it on a mostly bipartisan basis. But it was a day-long hearing. There must have been some contention in that 16 hours. Well, they had a long, you know, contention means you can spend a lot of time voting, uh, talking about things without really very many votes. One, one of the interesting fights is over a hundred million dollar plan to create an East Coast battery for anti-missile defense for, a, for the possibility of someday having countries like uh, Iran 
have uh, missiles that could reach the United States. It's not an immediate threat right now, and the initial money is $100 million, which isn't very much in terms of a, of a um, $650 billion defense budget, but the long range, this would be a $6 billion program, so it's committing you now to something that would spend a lot over time. Well, defense programs are going to take a hit, or set to take a hit, in January 2013 because of the debt deal, the debt agreement last year. Does the authorization bill make any accommodation for that? No, it doesn't. Uh, um, that's done separately. It, it, there's nothing that they could do in this bill that would change that. What, what do you see ahead on the House floor? And looking beyond that, uh, when is the Senate likely to take it up if it passes the House? Well, the Senate is backing itself up against the uh, Memorial Day recess to pass its bill, so it'll do it the last week of May uh, or um, in the committee. But when the Senate might pass a bill on the floor is a big question. For the last few years, they've had great trouble getting the bill to considered at all. Uh, I don't think that we'll have a final resolution until long after the November elections. Rick Mays, Congressional Editor with Military Times from Capitol Hill. Thank you for the update. The House won't get to the general debate on the defense authorization deal, bill until much later today. Right now, a vote on the question of consideration whether they're going to take up the rule for debate for both the Violence Against Women Act and the defense authorization bill. Democrats have raised a point of order against the um, against the reauthorization because it does not allow consideration of the Senate bill that passed a couple of weeks ago by the uh, vote of 68 to 13. If the uh, consideration is approved, if the House agrees to consider the rule debate, they'll debate the rule for an hour and that rule again covers the Violence Against Women Act and the Defense Authorization Act. We expect general debate this afternoon on the bill. The reauthorization would extend for five years the 1994 Violence Against Women Act the House version differs from the Senate version by omitting protections for victims of domestic violence who are gay and lesbian, immigrants and American Indians. It also imposes new rules for domestic violence grant programs, and the bill has drawn opposition from congressional Democrats as evidence in some of the opening debate, also from women's groups and the Obama administration, which last night issued a veto threat against the House version and urging them to take up the Senate version instead. So 15-minute vote underway and still ahead, debate on the rule and more general debate, uh, general debate on, the, uh, on the reauthorization.
The question of consideration is decided in the affirmative. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. For what purpose does the gentleman from North Carolina seek recognition? Sent to re remove Mr. Corjava as a co-sponsor from HCON Resolution 107. Without objection. That's pretty close. <laughs>